Welcome back to Golden Blue Dude, everybody. And if you are a college football fan, a diehard college football fan, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. That's all we do here. Videos of college football every single day. And don't forget, now you can send me stuff. Finally got a P.O. box. Send gear to represent your team on my back wall every single video and live show. Here's the address you send it to. P.O. Box 360 Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. Are you enjoying college football yet? I mean, week zero, yes, pumped. It's college football, but not really any marquee matchups. Zero ranked teams, so it, it, it's just college football was back. That's what week zero was all about. Well, drama happened. Unexpected drama happened. I, I did not think Nebraska was going to lose to Northwestern and especially call a terrible onside kick call, which basically swung the momentum over to Northwestern. Nebraska loses, and Scott Frost is definitely on the hot seat. He probably can't even set his tushy on his coaching seat right now. That's how hot it is. Then, of course, UConn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. UConn looked halfway decent. Well, at least their defense did. There's a lot of issues on their offense. But hey, they hung in there with the defending Mountain West champs. Could UConn be a bowl team this year? It's very possible. Vanderbilt. What about Vanderbilt? I was surprised that Vanderbilt was a 9.5 point favorite. Not only did they cover, they obliterated the spread. 63-10 to 10 over Hawaii. Could Vanderbilt get to a bowl? Really, if Vanderbilt plays the way they did against Hawaii, the only thing that could keep them out of a bowl is their schedule. It is, in my opinion, the toughest schedule in the entire nation. Six road trips. They got to play Alabama and Ole Miss and Georgia and, and a bunch of other great teams in the SEC. It's going to be tough for Vanderbilt, and they don't get to play themselves. That's another thing that hurts them. Vanderbilt doesn't get to play Vanderbilt, so they have zero gimme games. Well, maybe the FCS games. So, yeah, some unexpected storylines came out of week zero. On to week one. On to week one, and I will get to Saturday because that's where the chunk of the best games are going to be. But there are some games on Thursday, uh, a bunch of throwaway games with FCS, FBS. But there's three games that I'm looking at, one of which I will be at. Super excited. Starting to pack for that trip, actually, right now. But the first game I want to talk about is Central Michigan at number 12, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, a 21-point favorite, but we've seen in the past where Oklahoma State loses to a group of five team at home, so it is possible, and it was a Compass Michigan team in the past. I know it was controversial, but it shouldn't have been close to begin with, so don't blame the refs. Blame yourself. You shouldn't have let the game get to that point. Now, I'm expecting Oklahoma State to cruise, uh, maybe not by 21 because their defense is going to take a significant step back. They lost Knowles to Ohio State. They're a great, great, great defensive coordinator. And that's going to hurt Oklahoma State. And they lost a lot of key defenders on that defense. I think the offense could be a little bit better, but their bread and butter has been the defense over the past three to four years. So I expect Oklahoma State to take a step back. I do not expect the Cowboys to be contenders in the Big 12 as far as the championship. But I think they're going to be like an 8-4, possibly a 9-3 if some bounces go their way along the way in the regular season. So we'll see what happens with Oklahoma State. I expect them to beat Central Michigan. I, I don't think they're going to cover this. I would take Oklahoma State. Actually, flip that around. I would take Central Michigan and the 21 points. I'm still taking Oklahoma State to win, but I don't think they're going to cover. I think this is going to be a little bit closer than that spread, but who knows? I might be wrong. On to the next game. Now, these two teams not ranked. Uh, I'm not so sure that neither one of them should be ranked. Penn State at Purdue. This is a big game for Penn State. And James Franklin, to be honest with you, almost as big as, as the game against Northwestern was for Scott Frost at Nebraska. However, Purdue is not considered gimme for Penn State, but it would be a huge win for Penn State to start off the season. I'm actually high on Penn State. I think Penn State is capable of being in contention for the Big Ten Championship even towards the latter part of the year and possibly have a chance to win the Big Ten East. Of course, number one is going to be Ohio State. I expect Michigan to take a slight step back and, and brace yourself, Spartan fans. I expect Michigan State to take a significant step back this year. If you look back last year, yes, I was dead wrong about Michigan State. I thought they would be downright pathetic. And they surprised me with their record. But, but if you look at their games, their defense was, was non-existent. They had a terrible defense. Their passing game, okay. What carried that team? The running game. Kenneth Walker. Even when he was injured, you saw a different team with Michigan State. Kenneth Walker carried that team. Kenneth Walker is gone. So unless Michigan State takes a massive, and I mean a massive step forward on defense, they're going to take a little bit of a step backwards this year in 2021. But, you know, this is the first game of the year. They could they could pull off the upset because Penn State's actually favored three and a half. Yeah, 
That one actually kind of surprised me. I thought they would go to Purdue because uh, they're, they're going by last year and it's at home and it's the first game of the year. No, Penn State's a favorite. I think that's the right call, and I think Penn State can win this game, and I think they will win this game. But be careful. Road trips are tough, especially in the Big Ten. But my gosh, if Penn State wins this game, I think Penn State has a 10-win season. After this, they get Ohio, another tough road trip at Auburn, and then Central Michigan. So the three games after that, uh, one tough road trip. So if you can go on the road and beat Purdue, it'll give you confidence. Maybe you can go on the road and beat Auburn. Wow. Uh, for Purdue, after this, they have FCS Indiana State at Syracuse FAU. If you win this game, you're going to have a lot of confidence. Probably going to go 4-0. Uh, so it's pretty important for Purdue. I have Penn State, and I think they cover. I think Penn State wins by a touchdown. Finally, the backyard brawl. I'm going to be at this game. I'm super excited. Pitt is favored seven and a half. JT Daniels was just named the starting quarterback for West Virginia. Of course, Keaton Slovis was named the Pitt starting quarterback about a week ago. So it's going to be two former USC quarterbacks going at it. Of course, Pitt won the ACC, went 11-3 last year. They are preseason ranked number 17. West Virginia went 6-6 six six last year. Not great, but they have a good defense. They just needed to fix their offense, and I think that's exactly what they did. They went out and got Graham Harrell, a real offensive coordinator. That attracted JT Daniels. I think West Virginia's offense is going to be much, much better. And then for Pitt, they lost Kenny Pickett, Jordan Addison, and Mark Whipple. That, that's a big loss all on the offense, so I think their offense takes a significant step backwards this year. Pitt's going to have a good defense. So is West Virginia. They're not going to have all that big of a home field advantage because they're expecting at least 30,000 West Virginia fans. In fact, from what I'm hearing and confirmed, there was a lot of West Virginia fans that actually bought Pitt's season tickets just to go to this game, and then they'll probably try to sell them afterwards. That's crazy, but it's confirmed. I actually expect West Virginia to win this game by at least a touchdown, probably 10, 10 to 13 points, something like that. Very, very confident in our defense. Defense has been fixed. That was Neil Brown's first and foremost goal at West Virginia to fix the defense. That's done. The defense is fixed. Now, uh, three years into this, a, a lot of issues with the offense, and it took him three years to realize that he needed an actual offensive coordinator. That is the biggest knock that I have for Neil Brown. But finally, he realized that got his offensive coordinator, attracted JT Daniels. Maybe the light bulb will hit a lot faster instead of learning the lessons the hard way. Anyways, I expect our offense to be much, much better. Next three games for West Virginia after this because I do expect West Virginia to win this game. You get Kansas at home, should be win, FCS Townsend, blowout win. On the road to Virginia Tech, you're going to have a lot of confidence by going on the road and beating the ACC champs. West Virginia will be able to go on the road and beat Virginia Tech because Virginia Tech's uh, not as good as Pitt. Road environment might even it out, but I expect West Virginia to squeak one out and keep the Black Diamond Trophy. Remember, we beat Virginia Tech last year. And for Pitt, their next three games, Tennessee at Western Michigan and FCS Rhode Island. I mean, first of all, Tennessee, that's going to be a tough game. It is at home. But if you lose to West Virginia, like I'm anticipating, uh, that's a losable game. And then after that, at Western Michigan last year, Western Michigan beat Pitt at Pitt. So again, that, that could be a tough game. I expect Pitt to beat Western Michigan this year. I know it's on the road, but I think they were just sleeping last year. And then, of course, FCS Rhode Island. I actually expect Pitt to go on and have an 8-4 type of year. They're not going to be a bad team, but they are taking a step back on their offense this year. But that ACC schedule isn't all that difficult. So I think 8-4, decent for Pitt. For West Virginia, I think we go 9-3. and three. I think for some reason we're going to slip up in a game that we're not supposed to slip up. But if that doesn't happen, perhaps a 10-win season. You never know. But I'm sticking with 9-3 and three and for Pitt, 8-4. and four. See, I didn't totally disrespect Pitt. I still think you're going to have a decent season. I just think you're going to get off to a rocky start. That's it. That's all I got for you this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.